subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. Yet another set of guidelines for unlocking has been issued. This time, cinema halls, multiplexes will be allowed to operate at 50% capacity. Now, this comes close to the results of the latest Zero survey, which says that less than 7%, I think around 6.6% 6 .6 of uh, India's population has so far been affected by COVID, which means there is still a large number of people that remain vulnerable to the infection, to the virus. How safe in that scenario is it to keep unlocking, to open up all of these crowded public spaces? Uh, and whether schools, opening up schools at this point is at all safe, Abantika Ghosh, who you know covers health for the print, will answer all these questions. We believe in providing our readers good journalism, both on text and video. And we also believe that good journalism is something that our viewers and readers should pay for. So please do subscribe to The Print. You can log on to our website, theprint.in. There are two different links for subscription, one for users in India and one for our international viewers and readers. Uh, again, please do pay for good journalism. That is the call of the hour. So, Avantika, you know, uh, how startling or how expected, either way, were the findings of the Zero Survey? So, uh, I think they were along expected lines mm -hmm. because earlier, the earlier survey, which was in April, when uh, the disease was still very new to the country, you know, uh, in India, even though our first case was reported in, on 30th of January, it really started from 1st of March when the Delhi Mayur Bihar case was reported. So, to that extent, when the April survey showed just a 0.73% seroprevalence, um, that was along expected lines. And now this is data which is from August. Basically, this shows the position in August. Uh, so, this being 6.6%, I would say it was also along expected lines. Um, uh, what was perhaps not expected uh, is, is, the, is the numbers hmm. that we seem to have missed. Hmm. But then again, going by what were, what the numbers were in the earlier Cero survey, I think even this was kind of, you know, we knew it, it would be in crores, even if our actual number of cases in the country right now is uh, just about 63, a little over 63 lakh. Right. So I think the Cero survey results were very much along expected lines. Mm. Um, however, uh, the like you mentioned, the unlocking, that uh, actually, I would actually say even that is along expected lines because the world over, remember, this is this is actually a pattern that is happening because countries that have closed down, they cannot close down indefinitely. Absolutely. The economy is hmm. bleeding. Hmm. You know, so uh, it, there there is a there is always every country is reaching a point where they have to take a call between how much can you bleed the economy and. In India especially, see, it's not going away. It's not as if keeping all of this unlocked. Hmm. It's not as if your daily cases are any Falling. less. Right. You know, in fact, we touched 70,000 uh, two days ago. And uh, today's figure is again 86,821. So, which is again, so it's, it's rising. And we are looking at the festival season at winter. We are looking at increase. So, how long? It's, it's actually much better probably to sort of let people learn to live with it hmm. for want of a better phrase than to perpetually keep people indoors because that's right. not a viable thing economically or otherwise it cannot go on forever right so abantika uh, when you say that only you know less than seven percent have so far been infected which means we are nowhere close to herd immunity that everybody was talking about or a lot of people were hoping for actually we don't even know if herd immunity without a vaccine is achievable because mm. remember this is this this the, this particular zero survey that we're talking about is the national zero survey which was in 700 uh, villages across the country in 70 districts we also have the delhi zero survey which came yesterday where uh, there was actually a fall mm. the second zero survey in delhi showed 29 percent zero prevalence and yesterday's survey showed 24.3 right. percent so there's actually a fall if if we assume that the randomization of the sample in the study was accurate, it was exactly as it should be as per the norms of doing such a survey, then the only explanation would be that the antibodies, we have seen other studies which say that antibodies go away in three, day, uh, three uh, months. 
So then the only other explanation for the Delhi Seru survey would be that the antibodies have gone away. So in that case, that's a scary thought as well. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, that that is so we actually even for any disease to achieve herd immunity without a vaccine is a very, very expensive proposition. Hmm. But here, if you are looking, really looking at a a disease where the antibodies would wane away in like three months, then even even as a costly option, it's not an option because your antibodies will anyway go away. Right. So you will keep getting infected. Right. So now when we talk about unlocking Avantika, as I mentioned now, cinema halls and multiplexes will also be allowed to open. Uh, of course, there are, you know, pro there's protocol in place, there are guidelines in place. They exist even for gyms or for beauty parlors or for restaurants, etc. But the question is the the key is in the implementation um and you know that is that is the problem here that is not always practiced people are not necessarily wearing masks how is the government planning to deal with that particularly with the festival season approaching there's going to be durga puja there's going to be diwali or christmas new year i mean the next few months are a month of crowds gathering in celebrations yeah so um so let me sort of just take you away for a bit from mm. india mm. and look at uk mm. A few weeks ago, UK was telling people to eat out to help out. And now when cases are going up, Matt Hancock, who's the health secretary there, he has repeatedly said people are to be blamed. You know, on radio, he said, please don't infect your granny. Uh, please don't come infected because then you can kill your granny by uh, giving it to her. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> then, then at another point, he said, you know, tests, we are running short of tests because people are unnecessarily getting tested. Mm -hmm. That's actually a model. Mm. And we are walking that way. Mm. Because already last week, the health minister told parliament that people are irresponsible. That's how the disease is spreading. So essentially, I think, and also if, if, you, if you notice, at the start of the pandemic, we mm. had these huge advertisements coming saying you wash your hands, please right. wear masks, do this, do that. Those advertisements have gone away. They've made way for other government advertisements. There's nothing on COVID except a weekly uh, press conference where, uh, you know, all, all the senior bureaucrats and technocrats come and say, please wear your mask because we are. And they also say that we are expecting an escalation. Like you mentioned, the festival mm -hmm. season is coming. So this is a stated fact that they are expecting an escalation and they are saying that please wear masks, do gaj ki duri, mm. all of that. But that's one press conference and somebody occasionally comes on TV and says that. But no but, awareness But a campaign. concerted campaign is missing, which is which actually baffles me. It's baffled me for some time now. Mm. Because initially when I checked with uh, my sources in the government, we were told, I was told that, uh, you know, there's... Uh, there, they, they don't want too much um, sort of the financial, the fiscal uh, problems being the way they are, the economy being the way they are. They don't want uh, too much spending on ads. But now as we go along, I don't see that. I see other ads. Hmm. I don't see COVID ads. Why hmm. is that? Right. So you, you asked, how is the government preparing? Frankly speaking, I don't see the government preparing in any way. Hmm. Because the main thing here, I'm sure they are preparing because they, they are... They are doing all these meetings on oxygen, all, all of this, you know, uh, all the ICU care, the post-COVID care. Then you have the EICU in Ames where they are trying to make sure that deaths don't happen. And that is another thing. This unlocking clearly shows that the government is now working with the presumption that we are in community transmission. We cannot prevent cases. We cannot keep people locked up. Our best bet is to prevent deaths. Hmm. And that is the preparation they are doing. Right. So it's not to prevent the spread of COVID, but to prevent the fatality, uh, to pre lower right. the fatality. Right. All right. Okay. So let's take this question from Probeen. Uh, with the recent overall count declining, is there any suspicion that the numbers are being deliberately cut and how dangerous can it be when the low when a low count is reported? So is there any underreporting happening? We don't know unless we know how many antigen tests we are doing, and that is a figure that that government has resolutely hmm. not shared. Um, also, I want to uh, you know, I think I mentioned it earlier, but I want to emphasize this that the that week when we had a lowering of cases we also did low, less tests hmm. that's how it came hmm. down 
And you know, this week at the briefing, we were told we have a capacity of 15 lakh, but we don't necessarily need to do 15 lakh. I want to read out some of these uh, numbers. Right. You know, past few days, these are our testing figures. Let's from September 26th, that was 9 lakh 87 thousand. September 27th, 7 lakh 93 thousand. September 28th, 11 lakh 42. September 29th, 10 lakh. Today, 14 lakh 23. So you see how it's varying. It's, right. It's it's you know one day it's seven, one day it's fourteen. It's not an upward curve or it's, it's no. Just, it's it's, it's just oscillation. It's right. just completely whimsical. Mm. So how does this and work? And we don't know how many of these are antigen and how many of these we are T P C R. No, we don't know. All we are told every time we ask that question is that Tamil Nadu is doing ninety percent over ninety percent R T P C R, which is great because that's how it's supposed to be. Antigen mm. is supposed to be do, do, done in only some settings, in right. hospital settings, in containment zones. It's not something that you do randomly everywhere. Because it also, there are like false negatives that throw There are false negatives, yeah, mm. you could miss cases. Mm. And that is that is the pitfall here. You know, there may not be, it's not like a, a test has come positive and you keep it aside and you say we will not count this because we want the numbers at a certain level. But how much is the test that you're doing, right. how reliable how is that positivity or negativity? That right. is the question here. Right. Uh, Tarush, whether it's 7%, 1% or 40%, a developing lower income country like India cannot afford a lockdown. We cannot afford another lockdown, so let's open up everything and let the economy grow. Well, it's more of a comment and I think you've agreed with this yeah. uh, earlier in the conversation as well. Um, there's a question from Satadal. Since different cities have shown high variability in the Cero survey results, is it misleading to look at an aggregate nationwide figure? Should each area decide its own unlocking strategy then? Absolutely, that is a very fair point. Uh, and this is this is data I wanted to share. So in this same Cero survey, what it says is that urban slums, the uh, Cero prevalence is 15.6%. Non slums is it's 8.2%. Rural areas, it's 4.4%. So how can there be a one size fits all lockdown? Hmm. It has to be it has like like even in the on lockdown guidelines, they have said states have to take they have to take a call on schools. Right. They have to take a call on which all uh, festivals or um, uh, events or whatever they will uh, allow with more than hundred people. Hmm. So they have left it to the states. But my fear is, do states have that kind of granular data to take a call? Because ideally, this is a call that should be taken at best at the city level maybe even lower maybe right. maybe at at uh, uh, a corporation level right um so uh, that that is the problem do we have that kind of data hmm. uh, also you know one thing to add to this i wanted to ask you that what is it that causes such wide variation for instance uh, you know delhi showing 25 percent or whatever figure it showed in zero survey uh, all india figures being 6.6 so the nat national average is so much below delhi what does this tell us? Does it tell us that there was an explosion of cases in these hotspots? It tells us that Delhi is a crowded city. Hmm. The virus loves crowds and it just tells us that cities, why are slums? Hmm. Because crowded, unhygienic conditions. Hmm. In in Dharavi, if you remember, when, uh, when the government was saying, when there was an explosion of cases there and the government was saying, please wash your hands, hmm. they were not even, these people did not have the wherewithal to wash their hands even. Right. So the Department of Science and Technology was actually looking at low cost options so that people could go and wash their hands. You know, there was running water somehow hmm. where, you know, you didn't have to touch the bucket and mug and just get the water and wash your hands. Right. So, I mean, the logistics of it. Yeah. Right. Uh, Tarush, again, why isn't the government sharing raw data of the survey so that data scientists all over the world can study the pattern? They actually shared the raw data from the April survey, mm. uh, uh, but it was shared in September, by which time the data had completely lost its meaning. So uh, this government is not, uh, its its record in data sharing is not terribly great. On all fronts? So yeah, on all fronts. Uh, no, there, in, on, in other fronts, there are other issues, but here at least we don't know if data is fudged. Mm. But. Right. Uh, this this data is you know it's it's very difficult to get this government to share like any as, data. She, as she mentioned in fact there should be data uh, of the breakup between rt pcr and antigen tests that's very important but that's also not being shared by the government no. 
uh, okay radhika um, if any if antibodies go away how effective will a vaccine be i think that's a you know that's a question that all of us are very worried about now <laughs> yeah so and also you know all the world over everybody is actually now looking at a vaccine with just 50% efficacy a vaccine with 50% efficacy for it to be uh, to be effective at a population level you need very high coverage you mm. need very high numbers mm. and and also remember it's not just about money and vaccine efficacy and all of that how a vaccine is administered what level of training your health workers will need to administer that vaccine mm. will also be a limiting factor in your ultimate mm. vaccine coverage mm. you know for example just for argument sake mm. if we get that mrna vaccine that moderna is doing mm. it is so complicated to administer that you know you you probably can't go beyond the uh, sort of district hospital level maybe mm. uh, you know you can't go to the bhc level mm. but whereas if if you have like a simple nasal spray or nasal vaccine whatever that will be much more easily administered just right. one shot one injection that's fine right so that is there there are many concerns in vaccine um and also see for example the flu vaccine you get a seasonal flu vaccine right. every time it is also possible that you develop one vaccine and that vaccine will need to be uh, sort of revised absolutely every year or 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 periodically whatever right. the periodicity as of the it. flu as the virus changes the, it's yeah right. so you revise keep revising that vaccine and mm. you get newer versions as the virus goes on mm. but i mean that that's for the future but now we need to have the vaccine first, first to know i know yeah. i know these are all hypothetical uh, situations yeah. okay i'll take one last question this is from uh, a user called prat d considering the covid-19 death rates are so low in south asia and considering south asia is a developing part of the world is there any correlation between data genuity and death rates so uh, i i i is the question perhaps is about whether there is again death rates are they being fudged are we not are we not attributing it to covid and attributing it to just some other some states are definitely thing? doing that and they are doing that on record gujarat for example uh when we traveled to gujarat uh, hmm. uh so there the health secretary was actually on record saying that we are not counting people who died of covid and also had comorbidities which is completely against the right. icmr guideline on how to count covid right. deaths many states are doing that um it's it's not even data fudging it's simply that you have sort of you viewing it from a different angle yeah yeah right. you have reinterpreted a certain hmm. guideline and you're doing it yeah but having said that lancet is questioning our data uh, internationally many people are questioning our data um also because every time you do a sero survey you find so many missed cases hmm. if you're missing that many cases last time it was 64 lakh now it's between 9 crores to 11 crores depending on the you know numbers that they have given so if you've missed that many cases is it possible that you have not missed deaths so it's a very far it's a very long shot honestly right well thank you abantika for explaining what the sero survey results mean and in the context of opening up the economy further and further thank you so much for watching government matters and for sending in your questions